I thought, well, I really ought to go back to Iowa. That's my home state. And uh, so I, I went to the library and I got, they have, they have all kinds of resources there. And they, they had a book that had the names and addresses of every superintendent of schools in the state of Iowa. And so I looked at communities that had a big population. And in Iowa, that would be 5,000 people or more. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wrote 40 letters, uh, to each, one to each of these superintendents by name, typed individually, it was before computers, and um, um, told them about my background and uh, my interest in school counseling. And I, th I figured, well, you know, if I write to 40 people, I'd probably get 25 or 30 uh, uh, job offers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. Uh, well, what really happened was that I got, um, I got, well, for, 30 for 35 of the 40, I got zero response. Mm -hmm. They didn't even answer the letter. I did get four, I got four letters back, and they all said, uh, whatever gave you the <laughs> peculiar idea that we had an opening here for a school counselor, we don't. Yeah. And then I got one letter, and this one letter said, uh, all it said was, uh, if you happen to be in the neighborhood, <laughs> stop in. That's all it said. Well, I thought, this is my only chance. Eh? Uh, and, but I was in New York City, and uh, this was in Waterloo, Iowa, a, th a thousand miles away. And so I, but I found some guy that was... Uh, I'm, I'm going to need to hurry up just a bit. because Driving to California, got him to, to uh, take me, drop me off in uh, Waterloo, Iowa. And I go to the school and I say, uh, oh, hello, Mr. Gibson, uh, you sent me this letter about dropping in. I just happened to be in the neighborhood and I stopped <laughs> That's in. That's what it said in the letter. But the point of all this is that you think of all the unexpected events. Professor Clitheroe uh, happened to be reading this newsletter about uh, this fellowship at Columbia University. What if I'd asked some other professor for that? Or what if Professor Clitheroe had not read that newsletter? Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole series of events that were totally unexpected, that influenced what happened and how I became a school counselor. That's a fascinating story. What, what I'd like to do is, uh, and maybe you can highlight from the book, yeah, we're gonna show the book, uh, some of the same things that applied to your story, but uh, you've brought a bulleted list of like six key points from the book, and I thought we would show it to the audience. Sure. I'll read the bullet points, and they can uh, check out the book a bit. So <clears throat> this is from Luck is No Accident, and um, these are tips on how to generate your own good luck. And the first thing you say is always keep your options open. Right. Tell us about that. Well, uh, you see, there's a lot of people that, that uh, try to declare in advance what their, uh, what their job is going to be. Like Leo. <laughs> well, like Leo. But, but Leo did know. But okay. uh, he's one of the few okay. who really did know. Uh, but, but there's a lot of pressure on people to uh, declare what you're going to be in advance. And, and then once you declare it, then you sort of feel that you have to go for that one job. When there may be a whole bunch of other interesting jobs available that you don't even know about. So the advice is always keep your options open. And I would say even if you already have a good job, keep your options open because you might get a better offer uh, if you just know that you could or if you just know about an alternative. So don't close your mind just because you have told people <laughs> what you are doing. And there's a related point to that because you, when you apply for a job, one of the questions that the uh, uh, potential employer will ask you, well, what kind of work do you want to do? Mm -hmm. And our book, our advice is never answer that question because that gives them an excuse not to hire you because they, they mm -hmm. can just say, oh, well, we don't need that kind of work around here. See? So what you ought to say instead is, tell me some of the problems you're having around here because I might be able to help you out. See? Mm. And, and get them to talk about their the problems with their company or their organization or what kind of work that they need to have done or what trouble they're having with their customers. And then you can, you can say, well, now I could help with that, something like that. Well, let's talk about some ideas of how I could help. Mm -hmm. See, and so, 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 so you build on what the employer needs to have happen rather than on what you want to do. Okay. Um, the second one's test your dream one step at a time. Well, 
People think that they have to have a dream about some perfect occupation. And I think that that's fine if you have a dream. Mm -hmm. But if you do have a dream, uh, test it out a little bit at a time. See, don't throw over all of your uh, other alternatives just because you have a dream. Because it might turn out that the dream that you have is totally uh, unrealistic. Mm -hmm. Or the dream that you have doesn't work out the way you think it will. And we have some stories in the book about, about uh, someone who wanted to work with, uh, with gorillas and you know, mm -hmm. teaching them how to, how to communicate mm -hmm. and thought it would be a great kind of work to do. It turned out to be a terrible job. And, but, but she had this dream that it would be the perfect job. So you try to do things one step at a time, just to try a little bit. Go look at the people. Go, 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 go look at the job. Talk to people about it. Uh, before you, uh, maybe even before you apply, and find out if this is really what your dream is. Okay. Um, create your own good luck. Don't wait for it. Exactly. Don't wait. Make it happen, see? And, and you do that, you make it happen by all kinds of contacts with different people. Uh, asking people for advice. Uh, when you ride on a bus, uh, somebody sits down beside you, talk to that person. Mm -hmm. Don't just mm -hmm. sit there like a dummy. Mm -hmm. Talk to them. Mm -hmm. Talk to everybody you meet. Tell them, tell them you're looking for a job and uh, what do they know about? And, and say, and the other thing is, uh, who, who else do you think I should talk to? There you go. Who else do you think mm -hmm. I should talk to? Uh, well, what's their phone number? Or, or where do they work? Or, you know, get enough detail. And could I, could I use your name as a reference? Mm -hmm. uh, you know. It's almost like natural networking. Just natural, natural networking, but you're doing it all the time. Right, right. You're doing it all the time. Wow, okay. Um, take risks, make mistakes. Yes, don't be afraid to make mistakes. See, because, you know, uh, I once knew a woman who arose to a very prominent place in a, a major uh, publishing company. And she said, uh, you know, I, I've never accepted any job that I already knew how to do. But I just thought once I get the job, I'll start doing it. I'll make mistakes, but people will correct me. It's okay to make mistakes because I learn from my own mistakes. Mm. See, that's the, that's the key is to make yourself a constant learner. And not being afraid of mistakes is one way to keep learning. Because if, you, if you're afraid of making mistakes, then you won't do anything. You see, you, you'll freeze. I'm afraid of making a mistake. I better not. See? Yeah. In fact, um, you might enjoy this. Uh, one of my clients was telling me that at Google, in R&D, they have a sign that says, fail fast. And what they want them to do is spend something like 10 or 20% of their time trying everything. Yeah. That's finding out what the barrier, uh, that sounds like you can go along with it. That's consistent with, yes, absolutely. I go along with that. I like that. Um, well, you already kind of... I'll, I'll, I'll steal that idea. Fail fast. <laughs> yeah, you know a good idea when you, yeah, I mean, right. when you hear it. Uh, get, well, you just said this, get the job, then learn the skills. Exactly. Okay. Get, get the job, learn the skills. But, uh, but be sure you learn the skills. You okay. still have to know the skills. <laughs> uh, never complete your education. Keep learning. Exactly. See that. See, complete your education. This is this is this is advice <laughs> you hear all the time. You know, you know, I'm thinking about dropping out of school. Oh, really? Well, uh, why is that? Well, because I've been told I should complete my education. And what we say is never complete your education. Mm -hmm. uh, what about uh, what about some people like, uh, say, Bill Gates? Did he complete his education? Mm -hmm. No. Uh, of course, he's one of the richest uh, uh, men in the, in the world. Uh, but no, he didn't complete his education. He dropped out. Well, what about uh, Steve Jobs? Uh, you know, he's mm -hmm. CEO of Apple. Did he complete his education? No, he dropped out. What about uh, Michael Dell? I have a Dell computer. Did Michael Dell uh, finish his education? No, he was a college dropout. The, the richest people in, in America are all college dropouts. See, so this notion that you have to complete your education to be successful is a false notion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.